unless somebody was going to watch. <laughs> so you graduate, and now you're part of the Sea Org. And what was that like? Well, at first I was very, very happy because being on the EPF was one of the most terrible things I ever went through. It was just like the mess work because working for a minimum of 15 hours a day, and that's the absolute minimum that we worked. We worked three days and three nights the whole time, constantly digging trenches in the pouring rain, so bad that you had blisters on your hands. So when I finally graduated the EPF, it, I don't know, I thought I'd gone to heaven because I got a clean uniform. I didn't have to walk around in old boots that I don't know how many other people had worn before and overall. Um, and I was welcomed very warmly into the Sea Org. So everybody was happy to see me and they were proud of me and my dad was proud, so I was very happy. I thought when you, when you were a SEAL member that you would, um, it would get easier and you wouldn't have to work so long or so hard. I didn't think that office work um, or not physical work would be so tiring. Um, but the fact of the matter is that when you're in the SEAL, you work longer than when you work on the EPF. You get up earlier at 7 and you work until 12 if you're lucky. And you were still 16 yeah. at this point? Um, it was, I had a very big problem with the control that they took over you because they would do like um, personal hygiene checks where they would smell you if you had any body odor and if you did then people were called up to the front in front of the whole of the Sea Org and you know oh this person's body odor so very humiliating things like that. Um, I used to chew my fingernails and until one of the officers came up to me and um, also said in front of everyone, you know, oh, that looks really bad and humiliated me so badly that I never chewed my fingernails since then. Which is probably not bad, but I mean, I should be allowed to choose whether I'm going to chew my fingernails or not, so. What type of duties did you have in the um, Well, I worked in HCO, um, and because we didn't have any. Um, and we, would, we had two little staff, so nobody had a specific post and just looked after that post. Um, everyone just took care of everything. From the mail that came in, it was opened, it was checked for any money, it was, it was, it was uh, cross-read to see if any N theta, you know, any conscious ontology was in, um, and then it was handed out. So these were letters to people in the sea, or right. personal letters? Personal letters. Everything was open. Um, all the letters that went out, um, if, if we had specific people who were, not who were not working well, then we would check their letters, and otherwise we would spot check the letters. All that, you know, we would just spot check every day, take a handful of letters and check them. Um, the phone calls, listening on phone calls, coming in, every incoming, no, no, incoming, sure. outgoing spot check them or if you had um, specific people who were not working well who you were suspicious of then you would always check their phone calls. Um, we had, there was Did people know that their phone calls were being no, listened to? No, nobody knew, only HDR. Um, the, HDR, what was the...? The Hubbard Communications Office, everything with communications. The fax machine um, was in HCO and all the faxes that came in we read, all the faxes that went out we had to send so we also read them. Um, HTO, it's a closed area and only the members of the communications office have keys and otherwise nobody is allowed to set even one foot into the office. But at the age of 16 you were part of this yes. group that... Yes, and my, my boss was a 13 year old. Your boss was 13? Yeah, she was also one of my best friends while I was there. Um, her name's Lily, I think she's probably like 17, 18 now maybe. Well, Lily was a fantastic boss because she was younger than, well, she was almost my age. I, mean, I was 16, she was 13. Um, we were both kids, so, you know, we'd fall in love with people in the Sea Org and we'd talk about it and we'd have fun. And, you know, we would be pissed off with people and talk about it, which you're not allowed to do either, um, strictly forbidden. Um, when I was unhappy, I would tell her and she would, you know, she would comfort me. And when she was unhappy, she would tell me and I would comfort her. Um, and we'd fool around a lot, you know, while working, stuff like that. Um, so she was, I mean, the best boss I could have wished for.
but it was tough because she always had bags under her eyes, rings. She was always exhausted, and she was only 13, and it used to make me very unhappy to see her like that. And once a week, she used to go to school on a, on a Sunday, the Scientology school. Just once a week? Yeah. Um, and she would be so happy about going to school. She would get up in the morning and she would jump up and down, really jump up and down, you know, oh, school, and oh, we can play games and do sports and stuff. And I was the first time I've ever seen anyone in my life, you know, just be so excited about going to school. It was just outrageous for me. But that was the only time when she was allowed to be a child, and she was a child. Um, she didn't know anything about sex or about personal hygiene to do with, you know, menstruation, stuff like that. I had to explain these things to her. Whereas when you go to school, and when I went to school in Germany with 11 and 12, I really, they taught you these things in school automatically, but not in the Sea Org. And I think that the Sea Org does that on purpose because when you're 13 and you're in the Sea Org and you go to school, if you're lucky once a week, when are you ever going to, you know, I mean, when are you ever going to come to, to get any kind of certificate, you know, when are you going to graduate? Never. And they don't even teach the appropriate um, uh, subjects in the school either. So it's, it's well thought out because then they don't have anywhere to go. Because her mother's in the Sea Org, so when she's, I don't know, 20, um, what is she going to do if she leaves the Sea Org? I mean, what qualifications has she got? Nothing. I was fortunate that I had um, I hadn't finished high school when I joined the CEO, um, but just below high school, which in Germany you can do a lot with already, and I was good, so um, I knew whatever happens I can do something. Um, but most of the people don't, and the older you get, the harder it gets, and then you suddenly see it's hopeless. Do you see that in a lot of the people that you knew in the in the Sea Org, they felt it was hopeless, that they felt the Sea Org was their only yes. outlet? Yes. Um, what the Sea Org also does is they try to recruit a lot of people from, um, you know, like Nigeria, people who are desperate to get out of their own country, who, who, who live under such terrible conditions that they would go anywhere um, to get people young people, they're concentrating a lot on teenagers um, and kids starting from 12 upwards. How much were you paid in the Sea Org? <laughs> well, when I joined the Sea Org, I was told that I was going to get 30 pounds a week, which is, I don't know how many dollars. Um, but in the whole time I was there, I think I got paid about maybe 12, 15 times, and usually it was only 6 pounds or 3 pounds once or twice 12 pounds and once on Christmas I think I got 36 pounds. How did they justify this? Well they didn't justify it, they told us it was our own fault because if the org didn't do well, if the org didn't do well and bring in enough money well then we just didn't get paid. Um, another thing which was really bad was the food. We used to eat baked beans um, and raw cabbage every single day. Every day? Yeah. Sometimes I would, we'd eat it every single day because there was nothing else because they just didn't have money. Or every they'd... meal? Yeah. Well, okay, breakfast you would have toast. Toast and um, porridge, oats. Um, I remember stuff like very seldom they would have, they would, they would give, give you tea bags and everybody would fight over the tea bags and you would use them like seven or eight times. We never had milk, we never had sugar, and we never had fruit, um, except for in, well, whenever, what I think it's autumn, I don't know when apples are ripe, in pears, because there's a lot of apple and pear trees in um, St. Hill. Then we could pick as much as we wanted, but otherwise we didn't get anything. Amazing. You mentioned earlier about you and your friend talking about, uh, or, or falling in love with people in the Sea Org. Did you have any relationships with boys? <laughs> no, but there's no possi possible way you can have a relationship anyway because you have to marry the person. I mean, well, you can't have a sexual relationship in the Sea Org unless you're married. And, I mean, it would have been stupid to, to marry somebody just because of sex. So, But a lot of kids marry, happen. yeah, I kids as well, 16-year-olds 16 year, 16 year get married because their parents say, okay, you know, if their parents give their consent, then they can get married. Um, 
a lot of people went to this rehabilitation project for us, to the RPF, because they had sex and they weren't married, so they were punished for it. Um, I never had any relationships. I mean, there were a few people I thought very nice. 